Showtime. Showtime. <laughs> What's up? It is episode nine of the Craft Beer Playbook. Appreciate y'all for jumping on board again. We're almost a double digit episode. I know, nine already, huh? We're excited to get to episode 10 as we keep the ball rolling in terms of getting out and about. Keep the beer flowing. Keep the beer flowing, ball rolling. However, whatever analogy you want to wear, beer flowing probably makes more sense mm -hmm. considering our podcast and what we do here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Zach here, Brian here, and we're excited to chat with you guys and gals today. A lot of happening in the NFL, a lot of free agency movement. And now we know guys that could potentially hit free agency. Um, and, and it'll be exciting to kind of give our takes on where we think certain guys will go, their value, you know, Juju Smith Schuster against a guy like Kenny Galladay, like which of those receivers is worth, worth having. I'm so thirsty. I'm ready I for a tell. beer. I almost knocked this over. Um, I had a monster before we started this episode. So I'm like, I'm zoning right now, tweaking in a good way, obviously. Um, but as we head towards episode 10 and we're excited <laughs> about that because we're going to Bastet Brewing. Yes. We're going to hang out with our guys, Tom and Houston out there. Uh, it, it's over there uh, by Ebor. It's not in Ebor. It's by Ebor. By Ebor. Yes. Yep. Closer to Ikea, I think is it's probably. It's one the... of those spots where unless you know there's a brewery there, you probably wouldn't. You probably would just drive right by it. Which is why we're here to help you out because it's a great brewery. It's a great place to yeah. drink. The beer um, was great. And we went in there a few weeks ago, right after they just, they've been open for just a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spoke with Houston for most of the time. Real cool guy. Looking huge forward sports to, fan. Yeah, huge sports fan. Uh, looking forward to having him on the pod on Saturday, uh, talking some sports. Uh, briefly met Tom a little bit, but uh, the beer was great. And they had some really good names for some of their stuff too. I remember there was the gas station wine, I think was the name of one of the sours. That it was, was very honest. tasty. Yeah. So weird name. Um, I wanted to use this analogy for them. The cat is out of the bag because ah. their whole thing is, Bastet, who is the Egyptian goddess this of beer. beer yep. uh, and we'll get more on that and more on their story, how they started, you know, some of the hurdles they've had to overcome to, to get the brewery open and, and just the great beers that they have. But uh, yeah, Bastet, again, it'll be this Saturday. It'll be episode 10 of the Craft Beer Playbook with those gents. Talk I hope we're saying that right. I wonder if the T, I wonder if it's like Bastet or if it's like. <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. I called it Bastet. We said it's Bastet fine. when so we were there. It was fine. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm sure it's But fine. we'll be there at Bastet. Now you make me best day. No, it's best anyways, day. best day. Best uh, we'll be there Saturday from one to three and excited. Come on out. There's going to be a giveaway. We're going to have a lot of great things happening out there. So again, that'll be episode 10, but it's episode nine mm -hmm. and we have four beers. We didn't put, pick a specific brewery. It is a fridge free for all where mm. we just grab four beers out of our fridges and, and come up with it. They are still local. Um, I know we have green bench, which is St. Petersburg. That's right here. we got a couple from hidden Springs which we featured on the last episode, uh, but these Hidden Springs beers were not a part of that episode. And then the last good liquid. one. Good, good liquid. Good liquid. And good liquid is located somewhere Bradenton. locally. I know Bradenton, which is uh, obviously we did a MotorWorks episode, which is out there mm -hmm. in Bradenton as well. So good liquid's out there. We got we actually haven't been to good liquid. I fo We follow them. We follow y'all on good liquid if you're listening. Um, we, we've seen all your beers and stuff on social media, but we got to actually get out there and we'll check it out to, sometime yeah. soon. Mm -hmm. So that's the four. Uh, so I guess three local breweries that we're going to focus on for episode nine here again, NFL free agency. And we're going to talk a little bit about how it's been a year now since sports shut down uh, because of the pandemic. Now Isn't that crazy. We were just talking about this too, is because I I'm a huge, huge March Madness fan and love the brackets. I mean, we like, all I mean, we all are. Uh, yeah, yeah. You love the chaos of I March love the Madness chaos. I'm all about others. I'm out for blood when it comes yeah. to the brackets. But I was just talking about this, and it's 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 been two years. Since we got to fill out brackets, I mean, it's just devastating when you look forward to that so much, and then it just gets yanked out like a rug underneath you. Like last year, this time mm -hmm. we we, you know, the pandemic was just starting, and we were just getting into conference tournaments. If you yeah. remember, it was like literally like a couple, like exactly a year since this started. So looking back, it's just been a crazy year. Well, and we all know the NBA was first to shut down. March Madness was the first major tournament to get canceled. Mm -hmm. uh, hockey was put on hold. Nobody knew what was going to happen with the NFL. We got a virtual draft shortly after that and it was just it was wild it, ironically duke was one of the early ones to pull out last year and make that decision and then this year now have to pull out from the tournament because the uh, acc tournament right but they pulled out of the acc tournament last year they were one of the early ones to kind of say no we don't last want to deal year with they were locked into the march madness right. this yeah. year it's a little different we'll kind of see how that plays out Next week on the pod, uh, episode 11 at that point, a, a week from today, will be strictly March Madness. But there's a lot in the NFL. Before we dive into some pigskin talk, Brian, let's start, I think, with Green Bay. Uh, we started on my side last time. We'll start with Good Liquid. Good Liquid. Yeah. Okay, so we've got potholes in my lawn, and this, this is... Nobody likes potholes strikes in Strikes a chord lawn. in my heart here because I'm a big lawn guy, so I hate any time there's something wrong with my lawn. So this is a pineapple coconut sour. 
and it's got even a what is this is this a song or so there's like a poem here it says sing suckers it, sing it to me suckers know that i hate to recognize that every time i'm writing it's gone potholes in my lawn <laughs> interesting genre i feel like it, it feels like more rap than it does that <laughs> how am i supposed to know that <laughs> how, you, you sang it like it you was said like sing a, it to me, so a I hippie did. song or like something i mean look at it True. definitely looks look at the flowers well, i'm gonna look it up suckers suckers that suckers know that i hate to recognize that every time i'm writing it's gone potholes in my lawn po up I got nothing. Yeah, that must be an original, but I don't know if it's a rap or it's a. Uh, well, anyways, we're gonna try the beer. That's, that's the most. That's the most. Oh yeah, it's a song by. It's the song name is "Potholes in My Lawn." Dang, now I gotta get this song in there. Mm. It is rap though. I knew it was rap. It's rap. Yeah. Potholes in my lawn. De la Soul. Potholes in my lawn. That's how the... do you know it's rap? Well, I mean that's. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Looks like an R&B artist. Or disagree. Well, rap, R&B, hip-hop, whatever. That's what I meant. Anyways. Hip-hop? Hip-hop? Now we got to get this song Anonymous. rolling. Learn something new on every episode. Uh, this is episode nine, though, and I'm excited to try this. I'm thirsty. Shall we? What 5%, is 5%? Yeah, you know, just kind of start. I've heard light. good things about good liquid, so I'm excited to try this. It looks like good liquid. Mmm. Very pineapple-y on the nose. Oh, wow. It's not... You think it's going to be, like, mad fruity? Like just kind like changes, right? Pop, but it, it's a lot smoother, I think. Like you catch the 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 whiff of the coconut yeah. or the pineapple and the and the taste of it first, and I think you get a little coconut in the middle. That's and good, it, and it turns sour on you at the end. It's That's, like the Sour Patch Kids. Sometimes right? you have a beer now. Well, like inverted. Some yeah, but it's the commercials, right? Sometimes they start. Oh, they're sour than sweet. Yeah, yeah it's inverted. Right. inverted. But to, to your point though, sometimes you like you open a beer and you like you don't need a beer, and I feel like I needed a beer. <sighs> This is like the exact beer I feel like I needed right now because it is getting humid again out here in Tampa Bay. You know, it we've is. had some chillier days. Not quite there now. And we don't have to use the tape rope anymore. So <sighs> well, we've got a new solution. I prefer the our... tape rope, but yes, we got we got smart about it. We added some some things. We've we've we nailed upgraded. this to my wall, so now it's permanent. <laughs> Shout out to our guy Justin. Uh, hooked us up with these four beers. These were were dropped off by him at our last event. Justin's in Seventh a man. Sun. Justin. Cheers to you, man. Cheers to you. I'm sure Nothing he's got one. I'm sure he's, you know, he's going to be watching this with a, with a beer in his hand anyway. So we're so going to get to one of these. The uh, Enchanted Tiki Room from Hidden Springs. He said that they just filled that cooler with them again. So I'm going to, Ariel, my fiance, actually asked me to pick some up because she was supposed to try this and we're about to drink it. So I'm going to have to stop it looks like way. the guy from Crash Bandicoot. It it does look the like it. Well, but... I know it's based, oh it's based on Disney because it's the Enchanted <laughs> Tiki Room. So episode nine, let's get into some sports talk. Yeah. I'm going to drink this beer so fast. Is there more in there? There's no more. <laughs> <laughs> but we got other sours. Yeah, I know it's so. good. So, so episode nine. So we've seen a lot of guys get tagged. Uh, we'll start with the Bucks. Chris Godwin gets tagged, mm -hmm. receiver, and yep. I think that opens up the receiver conversation. Allen Robinson, poor guy, gets tagged again in Chicago. I know, man. I feel so bad for him. Right? Like, do you? We thought he was finally it, free. By the way, that's like sixteen million bucks in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So, like, have you ever felt worse for a guy getting a sixteen million dollar paycheck? Like, and to be fair, it, he was a free agent when he went to. No, the Bears, I know. So technically, he did choose that. But do but, you understand, but, like? We feel bad for a guy that's getting millions of dollars. <laughs> like, man, poor yeah. guy. Yeah, like, literally a certain amount of pity, I guess. But from a football standpoint, I do feel awful for him. Though. I just wanted to see him on a good off. Like, right. Obviously, I want him as a Dolphins fan, but I would have loved to see Allen Robinson even on the Packers, like playing with with Aaron Rodgers and just see like what kind of numbers he would put up on that kind of offense. Now, is anybody praying more that the rumor of Russell Wilson to Chicago comes true more than Allen Robinson? Like, he has to <laughs> oh, be. Yeah. He has. He had to have called Russ right after they tagged him and been like, listen, bro, like if you don't come here, I don't know what I'm going to do next season. Like, let me get your thoughts on that because to me, that seems so odd. I, I don't understand. The Russell Wilson rumor. Yeah, I don't understand. First it's of being all, perpetuated 100% from his side. But why? Why does he want out? And why is Chicago now kind of blossoming as like the number one destination? I don't understand that. I don't think it's weird that he quote unquote wants out because I think it's more so like leverage. Hey, this is what I want you guys to do from the front office standpoint. If you don't, I'm I want to go. Let me go. Well, what is that thing? Like, what do you think? Like, Build the what? offensive line. He well, said he's getting sacked too much, right? Okay, well, he also holds the ball forever too. I mean, part of that's on him. He admitted that, but that's I would argue that that's a much smaller portion than the offensive line. Granted, I agree, I, but I mean that's a fairly easy fix if they focus a lot of resources on the free agency and the draft and the offensive line. 
they right. can make a big but jump. But that's him leveraging them to do that. They might not want to do that. They might say, we have you as an elite quarterback. You're mobile. We're going to spend money elsewhere. We're going to spend money on the defense, which also can use it in Seattle. So – yeah, I, I think just, I get that aspect. The do you part think it's I don't, a bluff? You, you think essentially he's bluffing? Uh, I don't think he's bluffing. I, I think he's saying like he's, he's strong arming them in a way where it's like, okay, well, if you don't want to do this, which makes sense to me and everybody else, let me go elsewhere. The weird part is that he put Chicago on the list and as high as he did. Now, he might look at it as a similar situation to Tom Brady did, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, well, Tom went there. And, and one of the biggest things for me was him watching Mahomes and Brady go at it in the Super Bowl because Russ won man of the year. So he was at that game getting that award, sitting back. Had to be a weird night for him, right? Like, you're with Goodell at the top. You're watching this game, and you're like, why not me? Why not me? Tom Brady's got 10 years plus on me. Why not me? And Mahomes is 10 years younger. Why not me? Knowing he's an elite quarterback, which nobody disagrees on when it comes to Russell Wilson. Yeah. So he's watching that game. And I think for him, he's like, okay, well, I either need them to build my offensive line and build around me so that I can be more like Mahomes' team, Kansas City, or I need to pull a Brady and go elsewhere. You know Chicago's defense is stout, right? As long as Khalil yeah. Mack sticks around and a lot of those other pieces. But wouldn't they have to give up Khalil Mack to get Russell Wilson? Like well, that's the thing I think one thing at a time. Realizing. One thing at a time, right? You got Allen Robinson well, tag, so that. you have offensive weapons. Montgomery came on strong last year. I'm just saying, you asked me to, to go into the side of Russell Wilson. To get a top five quarterback, Wilson? this goes back to the Deshaun Watson thing, though. It's right. like to get him. What are you giving up, though? Yes, you obviously what you're getting. But in my opinion, if I'm Seattle, I don't even pick up the phone unless Khalil Mack is a part of that trade. Okay, so that's where it gets sticky because, okay, so you're walking through the whole idea of it. Why would Russ say this? This is why he said it. We got that down. Why would Russ pick Chicago? I just pointed out why he picked Chicago. Then it gets to the other side. Is Chicago a place that can give Seattle what they would want for a guy like Russ? The answer is no. So the rumor, I think, perpetuated again from Russell Wilson's side, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense, doesn't make any sense. And that's the toughest part is you're not going to get two sides to agree, which is why ultimately, and I've steadfastly said this, Russ is staying in Seattle for at least another season with the Seahawks. I don't know how you get away from it. Yeah, I just don't see that kind of trade. And I, I agree with the sentiment that it's probably more of him kind of trying to leverage that to, to get what he wants in terms of the offices, which I think that the team has to agree that obviously the offensive line needs to be a priority. So I don't really see this being, you know, again, every year this happens. Yeah. You get to the well, offseason, people get bored. They want to throw storylines out there, and they run with it. Yeah, but it's it's different between, like, you and I on the Craft Beer Playbook Episode 9 being like, Russell Wilson should go to Miami, and Russell Wilson being like, hey, to his agent, hey, put it out there that I want to go somewhere and put Chicago at the top of the list. That's the part that's weird, and it's in a season where we know Deshaun Watson is bluntly, publicly saying, I want out of Houston. And we've seen big trades with Goff and Stafford switching spots in L.A. and Detroit. So you think Wentz from Philly to Indianapolis. And what Brady did last year, that opened the floodgates to believing these types of things can happen. Yeah, but Brady was a free agent. I understand that's a that. Diff that's a major, major I, difference. There's no conceptually, conversation at all. Conceptually, the whole process the last five years, everybody said is, you have to draft a rookie and win on his rookie contract. That's how you win Super Bowls now in today's NFL. Tom Brady came to Tampa and said, eh, or you could be an older vet that's elite still. And you could go to a team that's ready to win more than the team that you're on. Maybe it's just time to split ties. Right. So I but think that's... Brady's kind of made the the, the the process and the theme different. No, I don't. I disagree because that it's such a rare situation for that to happen, right? The Bucks had been building this and doing well in the draft for years and really had a strong core in place. And yeah. I think other than the people who are just the Jameis truthers that literally supported him blindly realized that this team was close and could take that next step if they got some better consistency at the quarterback position. But those You don't think if Russ went to Chicago that they'd be an instant Super Bowl contender? Oh, of course. Okay, well, what I'm it's saying similar. Is, but that doesn't happen that often, Zach, is what I'm saying. Oh, is like, for sure. The, the for Tom sure. Brady situation, that that's not – that's purely – like, that's an outlier. That's not something that happens – Frequently well, because of the, okay, the way but, the circumstances but, lined up. There. That's not how trends work. Trends usually work with an outlier, and then other people see it, and they're like, oh, I think I could look good with bright yellow pants. Well, you can't. But what's the trend that, that you think is starting? I, a veteran quarterback being like, I need to go to a different team that's more ready to win now than the team I'm on. Okay, so let me pose you uh, another angle. Pose it. Pose it. Pose you another Poser. angle. Is that a concerning trend for the league? Well, Yeah. But it's great for fans. <laughs> like, mm, is it though? It kind of rings a lot like we're the literally NBA. having our whole conversation. I wanted to go free agency. We just spent ten minutes on Russell. Doesn't mean I you like it me? for the game. It means that it's something yeah, to talk it's, about. It's, but it doesn't mean that's think about, all it is. Look for at what fans, the NBA though. turned into, right? I mean, you think about when LeBron James and and Chris Bosh. Oh, well, that's a different it. question. Then that's if it happens. Like, 
Okay, but that's my question. But I don't think Russell's going to Do you think we're Seattle. on a slippery slope here with these quarterbacks and their demands where you got Deshaun Watson, you got Russell Wilson, guys that are top five guys who are trying to demand trades now off their team? We've never seen something like this in the NFL before. Okay. Do you think this is a concerning trend for the league heading towards that NBA direction where these players try to dictate the super teams and where they want to go? If they're able to, yes. Okay. I don't think they'll be able to. And I'll go a step further. I was 100% Deshaun Watson was going to leave Houston a day ago even. I'm like 95% now because the more and more I think about it, we talk about it, it takes so many different things to make that happen, right? Like, and the only reason Philly was able to get rid of Wentz is because Wright coached him. Wright's an Indy. They're having a great, you know, roster there. That was the only team he was going to be able to go to. Nobody else was going to pay for him. So he got lucky. The Stafford Goff deal, very different as well. You're, you're, there's a quarterback involved there. But when it comes to Russ and it comes to Deshaun, I'd say the likelihood of both those guys getting traded is less than 5%. I'd say the likelihood of one of them getting traded is less than 45%. The likelihood of both of them getting traded is like, it, I would say 1%. Yeah. So when you start thinking about those things, it's like, oh, it could be the NBA if all these things happen. It could be. And I think that's a conversation we approach if we get to that point. But if we're saying that, Owners are saying that. And so if you're, not are saying that, all, so you're not concerned at all if not one yet. of those guys demands a trade and gets his gets his way. You don't think that's starting of a concerning trend? You well, I think, think it depends on the player. If it's Russell Wilson, I think it's an issue. If it's Deshaun Watson, I don't. Because I think it's a very, very drastically different situation. And again, neither of these guys are going to move unless the return's worthwhile. In the NBA, these guys are moved, but there's no return. Right? Like... If LeBron go when LeBron went to LA, who did that screw? Nobody. Like he would screwed everybody that he didn't well, go to. Screwed Cleveland. But look at the other side of it, right? Well, not yeah, but that was free agency. They didn't trade him. He picked there. Similarly to Tom Brady picking the Bucks, in my opinion. And they won a championship. The Bucks won a championship. But the flip side of that is, well, they traded for AD, right? Who did they trade for AD from? The Pelicans, right? Mm -hmm. What did the Pelicans do with those traded options? Picked up Zion, who's an all-star and arguably the best player. Uh, at his age, his age group in the game right now. So if, if you flip it in a way where your team's getting a return that they can do something with it, like if Deshaun goes to, say, Miami, right, and Miami gives up all these draft picks, and let's say somehow they use that, what would they pick? What do you, what's Miami third, their highest third, pick? Third, yeah. So let's say they flip that and they take, let's just say Zach Wilson at quarterback. Let's say Zach Wilson is a, a, a great prospect that turns into – one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the league in some capacity. Well, and all is well. All is well. And that's how I feel about the NBA in certain capacities. Now, can every team become a super team? No. And it's harder to do in the NFL because rosters are bigger. I I'm not worried about it, though. To answer your question in the simplest form, I'm not worried about it. I'm not yet concerned. If both these guys were traded, maybe. If, especially if Russ. I don't think Russ gets traded, though. I think he ends up staying in Seattle. And if he does, you know we can approach that situation then. I just find it really odd, and, I, and again, I know you touched on some points as far as Chicago having good mm -hmm. defense, but I just, to me, it's a downgrade, right? I, I don't see Chicago anywhere closer to winning a Super Bowl than the than the roster that Seattle has right now around Russ. So it, it's a downgrade in terms of the surrounding talent, and especially when they're going to have to give up what they're going to have to get up to get him. So for him, for that kind of move, for him to say Chicago's near the top of my list, I just don't get it. I don't understand why he would want to leave Seattle and go and to a situation. That, that's on him. And, and again, I mean, I think we look at it, but we look at it, we, we look at it so bluntly. We're like, oh, it's similar roster wise. If Chicago makes moves to get Russ, then guess what? They're going to listen to him when he gets there. If they're not going to have any picks, they're not going to be able to build around him because they're going to have how what they're going to have to give up to get him. That's my point. But I agree that that's where it all falls apart, and that's why he's not leaving Seattle. Yeah. That's why ultimately it comes back to leverage. It's like, well, this is what I want. And it's like, well, Seattle's probably going to do that and you're going to get what you want and everything's going to be well. If they don't, for whatever reason, then you make it serious and you go to Chicago and we go from there. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we get there. I don't think we get there. We're just going through the process and the thoughts behind mm -hmm. it all. Um, I do want to ask this, though, as we kind of go through more. I do want to get Let's to switch to a beer real quick. Let's yeah, go over this one. Okay. Oh, you want to go. I like it because usually we go right to left or left to right. Mix it up. The Boom. Enchanted Tiki Room. We've got a dull whip. Woo! Whip, dull cool. whip, whip inspired Wait, Berliner, Berliner style Weiss ale with milk sugar. Weiss. All right, let's rock. Do we have a percentage? Where's so it's supposed to be. Uh, this is Hidden Springs, by the way. Hidden Springs, which we we did on episode Ocho, episode five point five, and it's a dull whip type thing. Whip. Dole this whip. 
a lot of places are doing this kind of like a, a knockoff Disney thing, which mm -hmm. I'm excited to try this because I love the Enchanted Sea Room over at Disney. Um, I, we, I, me and Ariel have been we try the a what? Few. The Enchanted what? Tiki Room. This is a thing. Yeah, it's a thing at Disney. What is it? It's, an, it's a restaurant. Oh, okay. So, good spot there at Disney. The scent does a beer like this. It's it's called the uh, geez pass holder. It's like annual pass holder. It's the name of it. We actually Ariel, I bought her a shirt of that. So I'm excited to try this because I can I want to put it like comparatively against the other one. And like I said, I already have to pick up her a four pack. So I'll be by Hidden Springs. This is in their cooler right now. I've been told by our guy Justin, who gave us this and gave us these four beers. Mm. Justin knows where it's at, man. JPEG, like baby. If we have any questions, that guy, he knows where to go. I know. This looks good. I love the can. I mean, obviously, Hidden Springs, we know they for just sure. crush the can. So for sure, for sure. Cheers on this. Dole whip. Whip. Dole whip. Okay, definitely more sour right off the bat. Have you had, let me ask you this. Have you had the Dole Whip at Disney? What, what is time. it? I'll get what you is going. It? Is it a beer? No, 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 no. What's the Dole Whip? It's a... It's a uh, it's like a slushy drink. Like it's like a, mm. it's a dessert Alcoholic? type thing. Mm. It's Disney. It's <laughs> it's Disney. <laughs> well, it's very popular. I which, mean, Disney which is, is why also I'm... Epcot. So, I mean, you can drink at Epcot. Yeah. So you're talking Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Dole Whip is where? Where do you get it? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. The thing you're, is, is like. You were pumping your chest a second ago about being a Disney, my chest. I'm, Disney guy. Epcot drinking isn't the, like that's a separate category. As you well, very yeah, well because know. You it's, can't really drink anywhere else. Well, you you well, not like you can at Epcot. It's not at every stop. Magic Kingdom, the only way you can drink is if you have a dinner reservation and you have taps of but like Bud Light. But Animal Kingdom has beers at all their stands. Okay, and, I haven't been there in a while. And uh Hollywood Studios has the baseliner bar, which is a craft beer type place. Baseliner bar? Yeah. That sounds cool. It is. I've spent a lot of time there. It's like the first stop <laughs> that I go to. We've ah, had, uh, man, they have some some really, they got a, I think it's, I want to say it's Rogue Dead Guy. They got Sierra Nevada. They have a few really good beers. And this is how you, this is what I love when you get to like a bar that's like not a craft beer bar that sells craft beer beers is they usually price them like similarly to their domestics. And so like, like we used to do with the is Lightning crazy? Games. crazy? Yeah, I know. We're just thinking so like we used to do with the Lightning Games, like all the beers. Are the, so they go by size beer, right? Yeah. At, at, uh, at, at, base, at Baseline. They go by size. So I get the biggest beer and the biggest ABV, and it's the same price as like Bud Light. That's like going to the uh, the lightning game. We always get the arrogant bastard at the mm -hmm. World of Beer inside, and it's like a 30, no, it's like a 22-ounce beer, but it costs the, like the same almost price exactly like the same as like a Boy, Bud, Bud Heavy. It's like, <laughs> come on, what do you mean? Hey, and it's like, keep doing what you're doing. No, I love we it. We love it. That's like 8%. I know. And you only need like one of those. for It's the like ordering like three Bud Heavies yeah. you know, for the price of one. No, that's that's the beauty of it. And one of the beauties of craft beer, you know, if you're going that route. Yep. Um, they don't know how to price their stuff sometimes. So back to the NFL free agent conversation. And, and I'll get to this one specifically. We mentioned that we talked about A-Rob a lot. And I feel bad for him. We'll see what they do at quarterback. He's been tagged. Godwin, I thought, was a smart tag for the Bucks. It, it certainly puts them in a situation now where it's like, what can you do? But it was the best deal they were going to get for him. And Levante was signed shortly after. Best deal they were going to get for him. We can agree on well, that. Well, it definitely shows exactly what the plan is with the Bucs. They're kicking the can down the road. They're going to try to load up again for one more run with Brady this year. And then, you know, it's, they're doing what the Saints have done with their salary cap. With which, the Super Bowl already under their belt. Though, right. But that's the a, thing. That's like, you kind of have to do that. When you're at that window, I mean, we know the NFL, your window is, is literally micro thin yeah. for most teams. Ask Russell Wilson. He exactly. probably thought he'd be back at least once, oh if not twice. I think since everyone last. would have agreed that they would yeah. have been back. But it's the new Patrick Mahomes, everybody you know, assumes they'll be back next year. It's going to put the, the the Bucks probably in some cap hell, you know, again in the future. But if I'm a fan of the Bucks, I'm totally on board with these moves because you have the window right now. You have you have no certainty at quarterback in the future, so might as well ride out Tom Brady until literally his arm starts to fall off. Which again, he played at a high enough level this year that got him a Super Bowl ring. So. Mm. Go all in again. Why not? Push the chips in the middle of the table and say, hey, we're going to do this one more time. I'm extremely interested to see. The, the, the big thing I keep pointing out to Bucks fans, they made both those moves, the tag for him and then the Levante deal, which was phenomenal, before making any roster cuts, mm -hmm. before making any restructuring deals public. So they know more about their money than we do because none of it's public yet. They knew that Levante was going to sign and the cap hit would be 3.5 before they tagged Chris Godwin. And I have to believe that there's some other things in the works that they already have figured out that make them think they could at least make a, a legitimate play to bring Shaq Barrett back. He's going to be expensive. 
I think he's going to be 20 mil. I don't know how they're going to come up with that and still have money to bring back the kicker and Ryan Suckup and some of these other guys. But I, I do love the, the, their situation here, and I think that they were literally did the best they could in the first day. I, I really do feel that way. Yeah, and I think that it's – I mean, that's they're going to be squeezing it razor thin, right, if they get Shaq Barrett back. Um, yeah. You know, but a lot of these guys, sometimes you get that – Sometimes you, the benefit of, of being a successful team, especially to the point where you win a Super Bowl, you get that hometown discount. Maybe these guys want to load up and, and go back for one more one more run at it, you know. And obviously, I don't know all the details of the Bucks, you know, cap situation. I don't. I mean, is it possible for them to even franchise tag him, or is that no. can they work that in? Well, no, they already tagged God. Oh, they tagged God. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, which again shows you what they value him. Which I always believed he was never going to hit the market. As a Dolphins fan, was a lot of Dolphins fans I've talked to that said we should go after Chris Godwin. I was like, look. There's no way in my mind the Bucks let that guy walk. He's an elite receiver at age, what, 23, 24, whatever he is, a young guy. He's literally probably not the even The only reason it was yet. even a conversation is because they already have Mike Evans locked up, who's also an elite receiver. If they didn't have Mike Evans, we wouldn't even be talking about Chris Godwin ever leaving. But yeah. because – and not that that like, you know, means that he, he will leave or that he should leave, but I'm just saying that's why the conversation was approached by someone. Yeah, but again, talking about where the league is these days, right? We had this conversation you know a week or two ago. It's like – you lock up your passing options, a passing league, right? So if you have two elite wide receivers on the outside. I hate that, dude. Because everybody's won a like. Super Bowl. What do you mean? But, but, but listen, though. Everybody's like, well, you need two passing, two elite options passing. And then everybody's looking at Levante David. And all I, you know what else I heard? You need two linebackers that can run in the inside. You know what else I heard? You need elite pass rushers. Well, guess what? You can't have elite everything. Right. Well, you can try. That's what the Bucks <laughs> are doing. But yeah. you get my point. Is like, yeah, you but, need a kicker that you can rely on. Like yeah, all these things. In my come opinion, up. again, they're probably not bringing AB back. Gronk will see his stats is up in the air. But if you lose Godwin from that offense, in my opinion, that's losing a huge weapon. And yes, you still have Mike Evans, but mm -hmm. Mike Evans is, you know, he's had some ankle issues, you know, foot issues. He, you know, he's, he's been banged up a little bit. It's like, what happens if they enter next year with just, you know, they got Cameron Bray, hope, you know, they get OJ Howard back. They got Evans, but then let's say Evans gets hurt again. Now you're running out guys like Scotty Miller as like wide receiver one or two every week. And it's like, that's going to be a big hit on the weapons that offense has. So it's an insurance policy. It's expensive. But like I said, while the window's open, throw the cash at it. We'll see. Uh, it's a done deal, though, now. Like I said, I'm more interested to see the other deals that are brought to light in the next few days here before the actual free agency window officially opens. Uh, two things I got for us on the other side. We're going to talk about how the year in the pandemic has, has changed in the last 12 months as we get back to March Madness and the NBA. Obviously, that was kind of the first sport to shut down. Galladay. This is good. I like this. It's, I told you, man. It's, I'm gonna, but more sour, I think, than I, this one. I'm going to have to pick up four now because Ariel's going to want to try it, and I, we stole hers, apparently. Dole whip. Justin, I know you're listening. He hooked us up with these beers, our guy JPEG. Ariel said that you specifically told her that beer was for her, and I feel very confused by that. And like You kind of put me in a bad situation because now i got to go buy more. But it's cool because <laughs> I'll drink more, so it's all win-win. Uh, and apparently it's in the, the Hidden Springs cooler at the moment. So two guys that aren't tagged free agent-wise and, and wide receiver-wise, Kenny Galladay leaving Detroit, and Juju Smith-Schuster in Pittsburgh. Interested to see which one of those guys you think is the better option, mm. uh, as a Dolphins fan specifically. And then let me read some names to you in the RB market, assuming, you know, things aren't – this is as is, and it can change at any moment. Aaron Jones, Chris Carson, Leonard Fournette, James Conner, Marlon Mack, Le'Veon Bell, Kenyon Drake, Mark Ingram, Philip Lindsay, Todd Gurley, Adrian Peterson. And that's just the beginning of the list of running backs that could potentially hit the market next week. You know who needs a running back? The Dolphins. Are they going to get one of those guys? We'll tell you more about it. Episode mm, 9. What a segue. The Craft Beer Playbook. we got two more beers to lock down. Zach, Brian will be back in as short as 60 seconds. Hold on. Craft Beer Playbook Blooper Reel. Oh, I did just watch The Prestige the other day, though. It's a great one, too. Yeah. What a twist. What a twist. Actually, okay, let me ask you this. Ugh. Off the record, though. This no is nothing to do with it. Technically, everything's on the record. Did you like The Prestige better or the other one that had a twist? Yeah, with Edward Norton, because yeah. that's your guy. That was really good. Prestige is better. Did you get like ants came out or when like Bugs Life, Bug, Bugs Life and it's like, Bug why would I go see both of those? Why would ants I go see sucks. two Pixar movies? Ants was so bad. It was ants wasn't Pixar though. Ants wasn't that bad. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> bugs Life at least had other bugs. After ten minutes of ants, I was like, we get it. You're <laughs> ants. <laughs> Ah! 
Craft Beer Playbook. Oh, boy. Whoa, we're back. Thanks for sticking around for that Woo. short commercial break. We got two more beers on the way. Another one from Hidden Springs and then something from our people over in St. Pete at Green Bench. And uh, we got more to talk about. I asked you about a couple receivers. I asked you about the running back class. It's about to hit free agency. And your thoughts on the pandemic as we kind of move through a full year of sports shutting down. Wow. So I'm going to start. Let's go. We just had Hidden Springs. So let's go. Yeah, I agree. We're going this. with this one. All right. We've had two sours now. We're going to finish with a sour. Nope. We're going this one next. Yeah. This is 10% and it's a stout. So we're going to finish with that one. You want to finish with that? Zaddy's going to feel real weird after a 10%. No, let's, look, come on. You want to go to that one now? Yeah, let's go. I'm not even going to taste that. I'm going to be so, nah, so beyond it. It's a sour. Come on. All right. Black is beautiful. 10%. Imperial stout. Oh, no, it's imperial. All right. 10%. See you on the other side, world. Imperial. Um, from our people over at Green Bench, Rude which we appreciate. justice and equality for people of color. BLM, baby. Let's and, do uh, it. Oh man, I'm Ooh. so worried. It's powerful. She's dark. Uh, I don't. I feel weird even holding this. I feel like it hurts. So the pandemic shut down. This is the weirdest part for me. Come on now. Come uh, on now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the weirdest part for me. So the pandemic happened, and, and one of the guys, Rudy Gobert. You said it right this time. Rudy Gobert licked Bro, a bunch of mic. He called him Go Rudy Go Beer. Never happened. Before he doesn't have it on the record. The episode started. Can't prove it. I don't know why he has so many issues with beer and bear. He keeps saying it's the Can't same word. It. It's not the same. It's the word. illusionist. Stop knocking bears down or bears, whatever. So Rudy Go Bear had uh, licked and joked around about some microphones. The next night he gets pulled. The NBA shut down. A few days later, March Madness is completely canceled. He started it all, man. Before you notice, the NHL is put on hold. The NFL is thrown up into the mix as far as what's going to happen with the draft. Everything shuts down. The college baseball season canceled altogether, mind you. That was another thing that happened. Yeah. High school Gators sports, ranked number one, literally. Back at it though, this year. Unanimous I know. To start they the would have won it last year. That would have been our second national championship. I'm telling you, they had a great team last year. They're back at it this year. Gators are running baseball right now. And, and not to go too deep into this, because I want to hit the NFL stuff again. We'll do the brackets next week on Thursday's episode. That'll be episode 11, because for that. episode 10, we're on episode 9 now. Episode 10 will be at Bastet Bruin over there, uh, just outside of Ybor City, off of Adamo. It's a beautiful little spot. We love to be there. It's close to Ikea, but look it up, Bastet Brewing. Our guys, Houston and Tom, are going to be out there holding it down with us. So we're going to be chatting with them from Hold 1 to down. 3. One to three in the afternoon next Saturday, a few days, two days actually, specifically from now. So excited to see everybody out there. Coming up quick. So my biggest thing with the pandemic, and I'll keep it short, I'll keep it simple, is it's made me just appreciate everything so much more sports-wise. And listen, mm -hmm. there's a lot to talk about in the pandemic in general. But to keep it sports and beer related, A, I'm, I'm thankful for the breweries that were able to survive it because we had conversations with some. I know Four Stacks, we did an episode on them. Like, They've basically been hit to the point where they don't know if they're ever going to be able to stay open very long again. Yeah. Um, I know breweries have shut down because of the pandemic. Uh, and, and then some have just struggled to stay afloat and are now trying to thrive yet again. And then on the sports side, we mentioned everything shut down. So it's made me appreciate so much more in my life. Uh, and I was already an appreciative person, but it's made me appreciate all those things even more. So especially, and I don't say this jokingly, especially beer and sports. Yeah. There were two things that I think that I took for granted personally. I didn't take my family, my friends, my health for granted, but I might've taken beer and sports for granted. And to get those two things back and to have them survive yeah. and be back at it, I'm, I'm just thankful, Brian. For sure. I, I think when it, the, all this started, I mean, we, we all had our our concerns over the fact that whether this NFL season would even be able to happen, right? I mean, even after months of, you know, the, the pandemic and lockdowns and all this stuff, and then, you know, then you had these these you know, at the beginning of the NFL season, it was just such a mess, right? They had no idea, like, they had no plan, no no real, like, objective every week when they're testing these guys. And it got better. But that's what I think you're seeing now. Now, this, a year later, yes, we're still dealing with the pandemic. But now you've got March Madness. You've got the NCAA tournament. They have a plan in place. So they're like, right. okay, these are going to be our backup teams. As did the NFL and Major League right. Baseball so and the So now they're learning from it. And, again, right. it's this is something we haven't dealt with ever before so it was you know a learning curve for everybody it's like the addition of the three-point shot in hoops right <laughs> or overtime let me, overtime let me... rolls changing things change you got to adapt how was it it didn't taste like a 10 percent beer which is not a good thing or it's a great thing depending on what kind of world you're living in it doesn't taste like 10 percent. typically in these heavier especially with the darker beers i feel like you can taste the booziness more oh i don't know that's thick that is for a 10 percent. black is beautiful 
Black is beautiful. And, um, man, and we heavy. supported so much the last few weeks. Supported adoptable dogs. What did we support last week? Something. Oh, uh, kids with cancer. Yep. Helped them Ezra out. the Lion. And now we're, we're helping out the BLM. Isn't that awesome about the beer community? You can drink beer and make a difference in the world. A very good friend of mine used to say, <laughs> I'm just sitting here drinking beer, making, making money. Making money. Now, in a way, we're just sitting here drinking beer, donating money. Saving the world. Saving the world. It's nice. I'm assuming the profits. Yeah. Oh, so it started with a place, I think, in Texas, with a brewery in Texas. Yep. Weather, what? No, it's right here. Weathered Souls Brewing, which is in San Antonio. They started Hosted it. by... Well, hosted, I think, probably means like started it. And then they found breweries in different areas probably to jump okay. on board. It would be my like assumption. It. I do like it, though. I think it's awesome. And I like Green Bench in general. I've had a lot of Green and Bench And that is beers. beautiful. I mean, Green Bench color. is a very, like, I'm going to a Rays game. I'm going to drink some Green Bench beer thing. St. Pete makes sense, right? Mm, definitely. Um, speaking Looking of which... a couple spring training games are coming, coming up. Spring man. training, bro. I'm already Ooh. at the shop, homie. I'm already That's like, true. I've already got us in Spring training just has that different feel though, right? For Doesn't sure. It? It's like, I love that. I love the, the regular season, but spring training is like you're outdoors. Baseball, by the way, which was one of the things opening day just completely canceled for baseball in the pandemic. We have one again coming up also yeah. in a few weeks. And now we're getting, you got the Rangers going to have full, full stadium, hundred percent capacity. You have to wear a mask, but you, <laughs> Hey, I mean, that is a step. In the right direction. Hopefully, they don't mess it up. So or or Texas, the opposite, depending on how you want to view it. If you're in Texas, do not screw this up for the rest of us. Uh, Wear your damn mask. I mean, even if you pack it, though. I mean, it's anyways. So we're like we keep it a beer in sports, and we'll we'll continue to do so. But you were just saying something about spring training, and it is so different. It's it's by far the best preseason in sports. It's not even arguable. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because it has it still has kind of the. It's not the product itself is not drastically different from the regular season, except ex, except when you have those split squads. That that to me is I not, love that. I, see, I'm not a huge fan of that because like I like it because I'm like I, we can win two games in one day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more enjoyable when you know you have a good farm system because you actually recognize True. some of the guys. Yeah. They, for me, as an Orioles fan, the farm system that's all they have is depleted. the farm system. What do you mean? That's a, no, our farm system has stunk the last few years. Now they've replenished it. Now they've got some talented guys that you get a chance to watch that you're not going to see in the regular season. So I enjoy it more now, like this season. But, you know, it's one of those things where you're outside, you can drink a beer. I know at least the Sarasota Stadium for the Orioles is beautiful. They have a craft beer section. Literally, you can go buy craft beer there. They have like 35, 40 different beers on tap there or in a can that you can go. Get. So it's, it's nice. You don't have to drink crappy beer. Uh, I think the only Sar we've there's a lot of great breweries out in Sarasota. We did feature Calusa; it was one of our favorites over that way. Mm -hmm. um, we'll definitely get over there again soon. We love uh, there really is a lot of good drinking out that way. A lot of good sports as well. You mentioned, especially with spring training. Back to football as we pivot here. We got one beer left. I did ask a question, and we'll get into the running back class. But I wanted to get your thoughts on just Juju Smith Schuster for the Steelers, now a free agent, versus a guy like Kenny Galladay, a free agent for the Lions. Both. <laughs> You could say both were the number one on their teams last year, I think. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. Juju you had more competition. Number one last he had year. more competition, but I, I think it's debatable. Um, which one of these guys do you think ultimately makes more money this offseason? Not, more, not more who's money? better. Who do you think it's paid more? Galladay or Juju? <laughs> now, I know that the Dolphins are most Here, likely going to get Juju. So, Here, That's a great question, and here's the thing. If both of those guys walk and they're not, they don't re-sign with their team, which at this point looks like they're not going to, so they're going to hit free agents. They're going to have a new team in, in 2021, most likely, because those still, are the top. There's two. still a few days from this episode to where teams exclusively have the rights to try to sign their guys. Yeah, of course, but at so, this point, again, you're, you're right. Seeing teams most that, likely, they're prioritizing guys, and the rumors at this point are, especially Galladay, they're basically it's it's a foregone conclusion that he's gone because they weren't tagged was the main thing. Who gets more money? I think that you're going to see both of those guys almost dead even because they're most likely option one and two or one A and one B, whatever you want to look at. It. Wherever they sign, they'll be the one. They're going to probably be considered wide receiver one. So who's better? Who's better? Yeah. Quick, 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 quick. No, quick. no, no, hold on. Quick, 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 quick. I don't have a quick, quick answer because they're two different players, Boo. completely different players. Boo. No, listen. Boo. Because it depends on its scheme. I'm so mad. It depends Just on give scheme. a guy. Well, okay, define better then. Tell me, give me like a metric and I'll tell you who's going to. Okay, you got one game. They're both on your roster, but one guy has to miss. Who are you making miss? Making miss? What do you mean miss? They're, they got a cold. They can't play. 
and they got a cold because you coughed on them. Who are you coughing on so that the other guy's good to go? Such a <laughs> the weird, best, whatever, whatever you, you asked, couldn't say who has more touchdowns. You could, you said no, if the one guy's a no. cold. If you're <laughs> coughing on one of these players because you need a win, God. Actually, I'll do it role reversal. Your the Dolphins, your your team, okay, are playing to win a Super Bowl. Juju and both Kenny Galladay are on their team, and or no, you're not yet. This goes back to my point. On? Okay, who are you coughing it's, on? It's a scheme fit. They're two completely different players. Who are you completely coughing on? Kenny Galladay. You're coughing on Kenny Galladay. Can you let me finish? I've been waiting. Kenny Galladay is a jump ball, 50-50 ball kind of guy. Okay, Mike Evans. He is a he's a Mike Evans type player. Okay? If good, you actually yeah. look at metrics last year, oh, Kenny don't, Galladay was don't, the don't. he was dead last in yards of separation. Mm-hmm. So if you want a guy who's a big target, big receiver, jump ball guy, red zone target, if you need that for your offense. Mm-hmm. That's your guy. Mm-hmm. If you want a guy like Juju, who is more of a slot, he's a slot receiver. That's what he is. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that's goes underneath routes, crossing Chris routes, Godwin. things like that. So Juju is a better fit for the Dolphins than what they need this time because they have Devontae Parker, who already is a Kenny Galladay. Now, Galladay is a great receiver. Don't get me wrong. All right, let's say that Devontae Parker got coughed on and he's missing a full season. And he's out. He gets cut. And the Dolphins need both those types of receivers. And you can only pick I one. I like Galladay slightly more. All right. So you'd cough on Juju. I don't know where this coughing thing comes from. We're already talked about. You, it. you put a him year in a coffin. Since, a year since COVID started. I don't want. Well, that, I want to move on. I want to. That uh, makes no it more believable. Coughing. No more. So you like Galladay? You think Galladay is the better uh, better guy to bring on to start a squad? I didn't say that, but you keep pinning me in a corner. You just said Galladay. I said I have a slight edge on him if you made me choose between those two. However, for the offense that the Dolphins okay. need, Juju is a better fit at this moment. Would you rather have, have both Parker. of them or neither of them? Both or neither. Yep. Well, to, you mean just randomly? Just yeah. Like, well, I'd rather have both. Obviously. Now, which one would you cough on? <laughs> what I cough on? Okay. You already said Juju. I can't believe that. It's crazy. You can't believe what? How you cough on Juju in this climate? <laughs> so I'm you, saying- so you think golf? Okay. All jokes aside, because you're making this so difficult on me, just to pick. I a make guy. it difficult. I still don't even understand what you're saying. You keep saying cough on a guy. Do you like, think what? just which ask me guy? A so question. one's a slot receiver, one's a jump ball. Do you think Juju's better at what he does, or Galladay's better at what he does? Do mm. not say they're even, or I'll punch you in the face. They're even. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what are you talking about? You got to pick one. That's how this works. I'll, then I'll lean Galladay. I, I just like Galladay better. I think. I do too. You said it. You keep saying him. So to be confident. But I don't want him on Say the Dolphins. I don't, but I don't want him on the Dolphins. Okay, fair, fair. So you've said technically, your... I don't want either of them on the Dolphins. I you don't have, have Curtis They're, Samuel. One of them is going to be on the Dolphins, probably. Maybe yeah, both because we're supposedly interested in everybody. We're interested in Aaron Jones. We're interested in James Conner. We're interested in Galladay. We're interested. We're getting in to the Juju. running backs. So you would cough on Juju. That concludes the argument. I would rather have Juju on the Dolphins right. than Kenny Galladay. But you think in However, general, Galladay is better what he does. in general, starting a team, let's say I'm just I'm the yeah, Houston you're Texans the, in their inaugural season, I get to pick a guy to take from your team. I'd rather take Galladay on my team. You can't than have him. They Juju. traded their picks away. So you have no choice. You have to be a fake team. We almost kind of forgot what that What's was like. What's a city that then? doesn't have – St. Louis, they could use it. They, they miss their football. The St. Louis Arcs. If you're the St. Louis Arcs. That's terrible. It's better than... You can do way better than that. Well, I was going to say Rams, but they already tried that. They didn't work. What about the Billikens? Billik, whatever. What the... Billik- the oh, St. Louis Billikens. Yeah, college. Yeah. They're going to be in the You're tournament. You're in March Madness probably. mode. St. Louis Billikens. <laughs> I don't what? know what that is. Which receiver are you taking then? I just told you. If I'm starting a team, I'm going to take Galladay. All right, so he's a St. But St. Louis But if I were to pick one for the Dolphins Does right now... Does he know that they're not a real team there. when he signs with them? <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't know that. <laughs> No, I would Do you take- feel worse for him or Allen Robinson. <laughs> Listen, I think right. I still think that the best fit for the Dolphins and a lot of teams is going to be Curtis Samuel. I think the guy is he's dynamic. He's ascending. He's at his best production this year. He's still only twenty. I think he's going to be twenty five at the start of next season. Mm-hmm. He's a guy I think a lot. And, and look, we had this. We had got a side bet going just for those of you. Well, you, we had three side home. bets. You're 0 for 1 so far. 0 for 1. That's all right. I still got time to win two oh, out of three. Me. Just to let everyone know, the other side bet is Curtis Samuel. I took the under on what he's getting in free agency, average per year, under 14 mil a year. 
he thinks he's getting over, which very well could happen because again, now with and we didn't expect Allen Robinson to be off the market. That changes a lot of things. So now with Allen Robinson being off the market, for the record, so 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 to give you some thought process behind this, I knew the tag was going to be around sixteen, mm-hmm. and I said that he would get around the tag because the guys that hit free agency, like, I think it was officially, I think it's officially what sixteen eight, although I think point eight. I think so. Okay, well, whatever, 16-ish. Yeah, it was around 16. But, but my whole point was I brought that up because I was trying to explain to you, so guys that hit free agency like Juju and Gall, they are going to get paid more than the tag. They're going to get probably 18, give or take. The tag, though, is based on the top five Correct. in that position, which so, means but that, your argument was that Every guys market have... gets reset, though, every year. So if the tag is based on the top five, that goes up every year. For that to go up, the free agents or guys have to I get know, extended and make That's a big jump, more. and that was the main argument. Not a million or two. But, but 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 I said we'll see we'll see. You thought he was going to get paid twelve. We met in the middle at fourteen. Remind you that, okay? Because I, I still think I'm get... going to be right, but we'll see. All right, we'll see. Yeah. But I will say, okay, if I end up being wrong, Alan Robinson for had, a, had a big factor in that because he was supposed to hit the market. Do you usually make excuses like this quickly before you're wrong? Is this how this works? Not excuses, just a fact. If I've known you long enough, market, you do usually make excuses. If Alan Robinson quick. was on the market. Then that would hurt him, I think, because then that would no, because you have more options. Because teams are like, okay, well, we the got- first receiver that signs, I everybody, this is the other argument. Just to go into this real quick, and I do want to get into the running backs. So we got one more beer, but before we do that, I want to wrap this up. So that's part of the argument is like, does the guy that first does the amount of receivers it, it might it dilutes it, right? So like, yeah, the, absolutely fair. But also, the first guy that signs sets the market. I would argue that a guy like Allen Robinson would have set the market higher than a guy like Juju. Or Galladay will. There's no guarantee he would be the first guy to sign, though. There's no guarantee that that would happen. But there, right? so but I feel of- good about saying he's going to get paid more. So, like, let's say Juju sets the market. Let's say he signs for seventeen point five. Allen would have been asking for eighteen because he would have said, "I'm better than that cat." Yeah, absolutely. so he would have maybe not set the market, but he, he would have raised that bar to a higher standard. Now Juju That's would set. That's a fair set. point. That's a fair point. I just think that again, it, the dilution has a much bigger effect when you have more guys on on the market. You got more to choose from. So it's like, okay, if, if this guy – so you set your limit, right? And you're like, okay, this is all I'm going to pay for our wide receiver Correct. one. If he if this guy's asking for above that, you move on to tier two. And you're like, okay, well, Allen Robinson's out of our price range. Because, I mean, again, it's, you have to budget to a certain extent. Smart teams do because they know where their limits are at these at these positions. Again, the cap – Some, some teams are, 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 are more – and net to do that. Absolutely. So. Agreed. hundred percent. Dolphins have been for years. They've been terrible with cap situation, yeah. but now they've gotten better and they have a limit and you blind Brian Flores was on a conference call today or yesterday and was like, we're not going to, he's like, he actually used a song reference and was like, you can't always get what you want. He goes, I'm going to be playing that song. He also reference. used the song reference. Suckers know that I hate to recognize that every time that I'm writing, it's gone. Potholes in my lawn. I don't know why he said that. that into a rap. It is a rap. Is it? I'm convinced. We're going to turn on to Dull Boy. So we have a disagreement on the receivers. Anyways, I'm going to win that bet. What, what's the disagreement? Two. You mean the free agency amount? Yeah. What's your answer to Galladay or Juju? Who'd you pick? Galladay. Because I think Galladay, I think a jump ball receiver is more, is harder to find at an elite level than a slot receiver. Because most slot receivers aren't their wide receiver one. Most slot receivers are wide There's receivers. There's a lot of guys coming out in the draft that can fill that role. The yeah. slot receiver, slot receiver, role? yeah, because yeah, it's an easier role to fill because you can't fake height, and height's a big part of the jump ball. And hands and ball skills. It's not just yeah. about height. There's plenty of tall guys that suck it when the ball's in the air. Plus, yeah. one of them has issues on TikTok. The other does it. So All you right. get the brand that's Juju, but you also got to deal with the look. The off field, <laughs> the off field stuff matters, bro. So All anyways, right, so we're moving on. We Dull boy, more. we got a carrot Dull cake and fresh. Carrot cake inspired sour ale with milk sugar. They love the milk sugar, right? Full disclosure, I've had this one before because I was like, "There's a little Batman symbol there." I was like, "Carrot cake?" Well, not officially. If it, that's they've it's there's legalities. Bat, right? There's a okay. bat symbol Slightly there. Change, but the, this uh, hatchet's chopping up some uh, carrots and some diamonds. So and... I like carrot cake. Do you like carrot cake in general? I do like carrot cake. My okay. grandma used to make a homemade carrot cake that was delicious. So when I first bought this at Hidden Springs, look at that. It looks like carrot cake. Did it's I, orange. I'm going to see. I, I probably untapped this. Oh Reminder, if you're watching the Craft Beer Playbook episode 9 right now with Zach and Brian. It's orange. Follow us on untapped at the Craft Beer Playbook. Also, oh you my follow God. us on both Look at that. Facebook and Instagram at the Craft Beer Playbook on Twitter at Beer Playbook. But just go to the craftbeerplaybook.com for all your needs. It looks like carrot juice. I'm 99% sure I untapped this because I had this. And I, I love carrot cake too, by the way. I got that. I, I'll be honest. I get that from my dad. My mom doesn't like carrot cake. My dad used to like oh, oh. 
My dad used to like hide carrot cake. You smell it already, don't you? Yeah, but there was like a carrot at the bottom. Oh of it. man, yeah, that's hers. You should have you should have rolled that. Yeah, I just dumped in some. Mine's way darker. It looks like now I got some carrot beets bits. <laughs> I think I had that's this. That's sick, bro. I don't know if I'm a. Do you want to like do a little like mixologist with the one of the empty? Glasses? I didn't realize I was just pouring, 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 and then some chunky we stuff do, just we dumped do a little, in there. We do a little mixologist. Cool. Dang, I'm trying to see if I check this in. See, my color is way darker. Yours looks thicker. Here, look, this is an empty glass. Do you want to just do like a little like mixologist? No. You're just gonna go for it. Here, well, what am I gonna do? If I dump it out, it's gonna be on top now. Well, you can you can try that and then try that and taste the difference. I'm good. All right, here we go. We'll worry about that later. You're the one. They can look it up. You're a carrot. Yep. It does taste like carrot cake. Mm, disagree. No, it does. It's good. I didn't. Well, think the it sour like kind of hides it a lot. If it wasn't a sour beer, I mean, I don't know how you'd make a carrot cake taste without a sour, but you don't. But it it does actually so, taste. It is the, the thing. first sip, but then we it tails a lot off of credit, on the sour. And just like we did in episode Ocho Eight with Hidden Springs, we give them credit because they try a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they hit the mark on this one. I really don't. Not that I honestly. Here's the thing. To be blunt. I like the beer. Well, it's. I like the beer. I just don't think it tastes like carrot cake. I think it's tough because it's, it's a sour. So it's like, when you taste a carrot cake, it's not sour. So it's kind of hard to take that taste. I do think the yeah, very I think first. I, do I don't think I untap this one. All right, we'll untap it on later. the nose. Right, the very first sip. Yeah. The very first part of it does taste like car carrot cake, but then it, mm. then you immediately get that mm. sour right after that. Mm. Got a lot of sediment to drink through. Oh, Nick Fallon, what's up? I don't know. Okay, if he, he didn't just send that because we're recording this. So we're getting to running backs, right? Yeah. So let me run you through this list. Obviously, I'm not going to ask you where I, you think each guy is going to go, but just like a general like thought process on like how to approach the running back market. If any of these guys you like put on different levels than others, if there's a guy that you would specifically avoid for whatever reason. But this is just the beginning of this. Let me just run you through some of these running backs and again some of these guys could be brought back to their teams while the exclusivity window is open uh, which is until monday tuesday early next week but aaron jones from the packers chris carson from seattle mm -hmm. um hold up i just saw oh yeah i forgot about that okay so aaron jones chris carson leonard fournette from the bucks james connor from the steelers marlon mack from the colts Le'Veon bell in kansas city Kenyon drake arizona mark ingram Baltimore, Philip Lindsay, Denver, Todd Gurley was in Atlanta this past season. Adrian Peterson was up in Detroit. That doesn't even include guys like James White, Frank Gore, Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson, Chris Thompson, or the uh, obviously draft class that's coming in. So if you need a running back, you're going to get one. Like yeah. that's the bottom line because Zach Blobner says so. Not quite stone cold. But when it comes to those guys, are there any that stick out to you that you're like, okay, that is the cream of the crop? Is there any guys that stick out that you're like, that guy I would avoid no matter what? And well, just in general, I mean, how do you approach the running back market? Because I, I think obviously the main guy of the, of the free agent market is going to be Aaron Jones. Outside of him, because you're right, he's look. He had a phenomenal <laughs> season in Green Bay. Part of the reason they were the best team in the NFC last year. Definitely, and he's a dynamic guy. I mean, he can catch the ball. He can he can run the ball. I mean, and he's, he's the most likely to be brought back by his team. So I think the Packers. You look at all those guys and the team that they're coming from. Packers are probably the most likely to resign that their running back. I don't think so. I disagree because they you think another team is more likely. I think Chris Carson would be a guy that's probably more likely to resign because In Seattle? there's way bigger uncertainty there. Jamal Williams with De with um not Denver, sorry, Green Bay has has proven that he's a capable guy, but they just drafted AJ Dillon, so they have that guy waiting in the wings. And as the year wore on, he got in he got more and more touches. So they were trying to definitely Wasn't see what they had. By him, though. He wasn't. He's a bigger guy, right? So he's a. He's I loved him in the draft. I was. I was big on him in the draft. I just thought when he saw the field, he wasn't anything special last year. He did okay. Limited action, mind you. But again, like you said, limited action, rookie guy. He's a bigger guy. He's a power back. So he's he's not going to. We have to probably grade all rookies on a very sliding scale from last year, especially yeah. guys that didn't play every week because there was no training camp. There was no rookie Absolutely. OTAs. No, or there was a training camp. There was no rookie mini camp. There was no OTAs. So all those guys. That's tough for any rookie. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of these rookies. You we're talking about that rookie wide receivers. A lot of guys took a long time. Yeah. Like Jerry Judy was a guy that I, coming out, I was like, this guy is an absolute stud. 
no practice with their team. Yeah, I mean, pro- and Denver you look had, at like, overall, he's kind of a disappointment as rookie year, but he's a guy that has a skill set that can definitely be a great wide receiver in the NFL. No, stop it. Stop. What? Stop. We're done with the receiver. Stop getting away. I was just giving an example. No, you're done. No more receiver talk. <laughs> running backs. Okay, running backs. So Aaron Jones God. is this running is, back one. You've been doing too many mock drafts in Miami because I know you've probably taken a receiver every fuck. Well, I try not to curse. Even though it's a podcast, we're allowed to. I can do what I want. It's a bad habit. Stop. <laughs> no more okay, receiver. Okay, I'm on the running back. So Aaron God. Jones, running back one. He's going to hit the market. He's not going to be re by Green Bay. Okay. I think Chris Carson ultimately So he's going to get, get the re-signed. most money. In free yeah. agency. Is he worth it? Can he work it? Will he put that thing down, flip it, and reverse it? No, but seriously, <laughs> does he get paid up? He worth what though, right? It depends. What's he gonna get? You know he's gonna get if you think he's gonna be the number, what you will. So be. he's eight to twelve. Right. Eight mil to twelve, that's a big range, but eight would be a bargain. Twelve is probably gonna be more close. How much to is the- Zeke making right now? Zeke is making because I would assume Zeke's making above that, I think. Zeke is making. You don't think Aaron Jones after a season is going to get that? Zeke's, I think Aaron Jones. I think Zeke's his, averaging fifteen a year. I think Aaron Jones on the free market. Again, we talked about this last week, though. Teams have to budget themselves this year because the salary cap went down. Zeke's making fifteen a year. You're telling me Aaron Jones from Green Bay, if he hits free agency, is going to make ten or less? No, I didn't say ten or less. I think he gets twelve. Less than Zeke. Less than Zeke. Even though he just had a phenomenal year, and we always find a team that will overpay for the top running back. Was his year phenomenal? I thought so. What was his stats? He was a top running back. He was very good last season. He was good. He wasn't – I don't think he was phenomenal. Tell me his rushing yards and his touchdowns and his receiving yards. I well, mean, don't get me wrong. He's list. a great back. But, listen, I'm not a fan of, of free agent running backs. I, I'm just not. I You get a cheap guy, you can pay him – I agree, by the way. That my, your philosophy is you my philosophy. You can pay him 3.5 mil a year as a rookie and literally get a three or four years out of the guy with potential Pro Bowl production. So, I mean, guys like J.K. Dobbins, who was a second-round draft pick last year with the Ravens, he's going to be probably the number one guy on a run first team next year, and you're only paying that guy, what, three mil a year? I mean, that's what you want at that position because their legs run out so fast because of the wear and tear. So Aaron Jones was fourth in rushing yards per game. Now he only averaged 70, roughly 79 yards per game. Average. It's not bad. That's fourth in the league behind Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, and Derrick Henry. Yeah, 79 yards a game. Is, so 80 yards a game is 800 on 10 games. 15 games would be like 1,200. So you're looking at 1,300 rushing yards. Ninth in touchdowns at nine. What else do you want? So thirteen hundred rushing yards, nine touchdowns. Yeah, that's a that's a great back. It's a top ten back. And he was twelfth in receiving yard. Oh, let's do receiving but yards. again, going into free agency, Zach, you have to realize this guy was on offense with Aaron Rodgers. If he goes to a team like oh, I don't have to realize it. You're thinking thirty one other teams will realize it. Do you feel that confident in thirty one other NFL teams? And what? That they'll be smart enough to be like, well, we don't have Aaron Rodgers. Or what if he goes to a team like, I don't like Seattle that has a guy that's comparable. Not that he would. I'm just saying, Seattle would be a great fit if they don't if they choose to not re-sign Chris Carson and they take Aaron Jones instead. That's I mean that's a that's a swap right there. Chris Carson's good when he's healthy, but he's never healthy. So you got Aaron Jones at 12 mil. I would say he probably gets on the high end of 12 mil, 12, 12 yeah, and a half. That's the high end. What's the low end? Like eight, nine. Mm, probably around 10. I'll take the over 12. Over 12? Yeah. We're doing this? Yeah, I already got one under my belt. I know I'm going to get a second one because I know that Curtis Samuel is going to get 14 or more. Okay. All right. I'll do – so we're at 12 even then. 12 you even. said that's his high end, so I, I'm not going over that. Right. Okay. So 12, 12 mil a year, AP, yeah. APY. Yeah. All right. Done. I feel good about it. Zeke's making 15. Zeke's overpaid. Yeah, 100%. I don't disagree with you. And, this he, is, and I've been having but, this argument a lot. And this is, I think, where we're different. I actually agree with your reasoning behind all these cats and their money and their pay. I disagree with you giving so much credit to the, uh, the rest of the league. But my leverage is in a year where the salary cap has decreased, Yeah, Fair. teams are going to be on a tighter budget. They have to be. They have no choice. They, 
teams plan for the salary cap Zach to always go up mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. They didn't expect COVID. Now right. all of a sudden they're kicking the can down the road. Like they know three next years. year it's going to go up a lot. Next year it will. Yeah. But two or three years ago, they didn't plan for this year. So they're kicking the can, kicking the can down the road. Now all of a sudden 2020 happens COVID. Now they're like, Oh shit. We didn't expect this. Now the salary cap's down. We're going to be tighter. They have to make decisions in this free agency. They're going to be much more budget savvy. So okay. I think it's going to affect the, the overall market blow up that you usually see with free agents a little bit. Again, not too much because just there's still teams that want to yeah. spend. Well, it's just like inflation. It's never going to be like a, right. a crazy amount. Like, but it's, I but think it does it's going to affect the cap of what you see versus years past where teams are just like, ah, whatever, whatever he wants. Give I'm excited cap. because it's not that's not just a running back conversation. That's also with receipt. That's all these guys. Like I said, Shaq's going to make 20 million from the pass rusher, uh, pass rusher position, edge rusher. Like if that's true. 20 is probably too much. It'll probably be closer to like 18, 17 for his position, which were normally would have been probably more than 20 in a normal year. Somebody would have overpaid. Yeah, I mean, Maybe overpaying now is underpaying still. We got free agency starting next week. So we're going to see by the time we have our next podcast after Bassett Brewing, we're going to see a lot. We're going to see we have the brackets out. We're going to have free agency starting. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're going to have a lot to talk about because we'll these, have, these contracts, I mean, tampering period starts what? In the next couple of days. Oh, we're already in tampering. If you're talking no, about that, you're officially. I think it's like the it's you're like not, the 13th or 14th. You're not supposed to be talking to any cats right now that aren't on your roster. But there's the legally year. legal tampering. Oh, legal period. tampering. It yeah. starts, I think, on the 15th, and then I think that's Monday or Tuesday. That's what I said. Right. So that's Monday is the 15th, right? Yep. Because we're doing our event 13th Saturday, Bass Dead yep. Bruin, one to three. And then officially, free agent starts on the 17th, Tuesday. I think. Well, the league, new league year starts the 17th. Right, which is Wednesday. so the tampering period is two days. Yeah. You're gonna have guys that agree Monday, to deals Tuesday. on Monday and Tuesday. So by the time we have our next, we'll know a lot. And what brackets? Love it. Can't wait. If I may, carrot cake sour. Those running backs I just mentioned, I think the best value for what you're gonna get from this guy in 2021 production wise to what you're gonna pay him is Marlon Mack. It's a guy who I think was <sighs> just injury just shredded though, man. And I mean, and he could still get hurt again. Chris Carson's the same, by Love the way. Love the U.S. guy, USF local guy, right? But I think Marlon Mack is the best value. <sighs> I don't know, man. Out of that list. Once guys, I think he's going to make less than a lot of those guys, including Connor, and including Leonard Fournette, because I think Fournette's going to sign a shorter deal. I think he's going to be like a two-year guy somewhere for a good good chunk of change. But I think Marlon Mack's probably not going to get paid top five out of the running back list. Maybe sixth. He could be fifth, I guess. But I, I think know. he's the running best back value. though. Once you once you get to that point where you start to have season-ending injuries. It's one time? really hard. No, he's had two. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the other one wasn't as early in the season. Last year it was it like matter when you have a, I mean, ma there are major injuries. Yeah, when you yeah, have an injury fair. to end your season twice, that really affects the guy's explosiveness, his speed, and then they're just aging every day. I think it's hard yeah, for those I, guys I, to bounce back. I love his value because I don't think he's going to be nearly as expensive as some of these other guys. It's been a fun episode. Zach and Brian doing our thing. Episode nine here. Episode 10, reminder to everybody come out to Bass that Bruin. Over there on Adamo Drive. Is it still Adamo? State Road 60. It's got like 20 names. Turns into Channel Side. Mm. That road in general has so many different names. I think Adamo's good. I don't know the official by address, the, but well, it's out by the Ebor area. The beauty of our Ikea. listeners, they have Google. They can, you know, they can look it up. I think it's pronounced goggle. Mm. Just like uh yeah. beers. Karat. Bears. Bears? Karat cake. Best day brewing. Anyways, that's episode nine in the books. Time to wrap it up. Wrap with an R? Well, I guess it's the same thing. All right. We'll see you guys and gals in seven Pot days. Potholes in my lawn. Might even uh, – we got a giveaway Saturday at Bastet that we're going to do. I think we might have one for March Madness too. Let's do it.